Okay, a question that comes up quite a lot when we analyse a perfectly competitive market structure is why in the short run, when firms are making sub-normal profits or economic losses, why do only some firms leave the industry? It makes logical sense, surely, that all firms would leave the industry if sub-normal profits were being made. What's the point in carrying on? But then, when we shift the supply curve to the left, we're only shifting it a little bit to the left, we're not eradicating the supply completely. Some firms stay. Well, why do some firms stay and some firms leave? Let's understand why uh, might that happen and what actually is occurring in firms for them to stay or leave uh, when losses are being made in the short run. So consider this scenario. A firm is operating with these costs and revenues. I've now put figures on the axis to help you um, understand this a bit more clearly. So, we know a profit maximising firm will produce where MC equals MR. These are our basic cost of revenue diagrams of perfect competition. There's MC equals MR, so if I want to label that, that's average revenue, it's also marginal revenue, and it's also the demand curve. Okay, so there's MR and there's MC, that's where they cut. That level of output is 200 units of whatever it might be. Okay, and at that level of production, 200 units, let's say um, the price is £50. Okay, so that price has been taken from the, um, uh, from the market originally. Okay, so they've not chosen that, that's been taken. Okay, but profit maximizing 200 units at that price. Fine. Okay, we know that this firm is making a loss. Average revenue is less than average cost. A loss is being made, okay? And the losses that are being made are basically this area here. So if I shade that area in red, that area tells us the total loss is being made. So it's £10, a difference between 60 and 50, 10 pounds times by the quantity, 200, okay, which gives us 2,000 pounds. And let's assume this is happening per week. Okay, so this is happening in a week time period. 2,000 pounds per week losses being made. Now, we would assume that surely this firm should leave. They're making losses, so get out. Well, no. This firm can actually continue producing, and it makes sense for it to continue producing. Okay, it's a rational thing to do, and why? Well, we need to have more information about costs. We can't just make a, a broad assumption that the firm should leave straight away. Let's compare costs to revenues. So, we can work out that total um, variable costs for this firm, producing a 200 units of quantity, all right, going up to the average variable cost curve, which is an extension I've drawn on here. Okay? In truth, we know that it's always going to be below the AC, taking a similar shape. Okay, I'm going to understand why. Well, our total variable costs are just 40 times 200, okay? So at that level of production, 40 times 200 gives us £8,000 total variable costs. So things like wages and, and raw material costs, etc. So £8,000 of total variable costs. Our fixed costs, therefore, is just a difference. What's left to get to average cost? Well, it's just a gap of £20 times that by 200. We get £4,000 total of fixed cost for this firm. Add the two together. So our total cost is £12,000 producing an output level 200. That's the total cost of the firm, £12,000. We can also work out our average revenue. Okay, so our average revenue is just £50 times the unit sold, okay, at that level. So 200 times by 50, alright, so the total revenue, alright, produces £10,000. Alright, total revenue is the average times by the quantity, so £10,000. Alright, so we've got a loss of £2,000 a week, that's how we can actually work that out. Fine. Why should this firm continue producing? Well, it's making £2,000 a week of losses, but it's covering all of its variable costs. So it's still covering its wage costs, it's still covering its raw material costs. So the, the cost it has to pay immediately, it's covering. It's only £8,000 of variable costs, it's making £10,000 a week. So it's covering its variable costs, fine. So this firm should continue producing to minimise its losses because it can still contribute £2,000 extra to its variable cost. It's total, it's to its fixed cost, apologies. Its variable costs are only at £8,000, but its revenue is at £10,000. So there's £2,000 excess there that can be used to do something. Well, why not put that £2,000 towards your fixed costs, which brings down, okay, which brings down the amount of fixed costs that you have to pay to only £2,000. Whereas if you left the industry straight away at this stage, 
you would be committed to paying £4,000 worth of fixed costs. That you have to pay regardless. So you have to pay £4,000 each week. Okay? But if you keep producing, you're only having to pay £2,000 each week. So it minimizes your losses. So the key thing to take away here is that as long as MC equals MR, as long as your production level point occurs above your average variable cost curve, so basically as long as you're covering your variable costs, all right, you can make some contribution to minimize the losses. You can make some contribution towards your fixed costs, which will minimize your overall losses. So in that sense, it makes sense to keep doing so until you now can't even cover your variable costs. If you can't even do that, get out quickly. And for some firms, that might be the, that might be the case. When losses are being made, it might be the case that they're not, not even covering their variable costs, in which case, get out. For some firms, they might be covering their variable costs, they might be doing more than that, in which case, contribute to your fixed costs, minimize your overall losses. Okay? And maybe, uh, as time goes on, you'll get to a position of normal profits, in which case, fine. Or you might, in the short run, get to a case of super normal profits. Okay? But just because you're making a loss in the short run, it doesn't mean you exit straight away. It depends on the cost positions and the cost levels in your firm with respect to variable costs and fixed costs. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. So any production point below um, average variable cost, that's the shutdown point. So the shutdown point occurs when you can't even cover your variable costs. Hope that makes sense. See you next time. Thank you.